Hello and welcome to this edition of SFG Top Performance Podcast. Today we're going to talk a little bit about grain and then some feed items. Scott and Mike are both with me. So we'll kick off with the grain just real quick and we're filming this the Friday before Labor Day and I mentioned that just because with this grain market being a yo-yo and it has been for going on two years and it looks like it will be the same way for the next uh, year, who knows. But that gives you a perspective of, of you know, things change so fast. Uh, I don't want you to think, hey, I watched this uh, on a Tuesday or Wednesday and this is current. Well, it, it's back to, to last Friday and typically we post it the very first of the next week and of course this next week it'll probably be Tuesday but like I say that yo-yo just continues with large weekly sometimes daily price swings in the trade and and we're kind of sitting here waiting for some actual yield results the pro farmer tour took place a week ago uh, come in with some pretty uh, amazing numbers I thought the the corn yield they they yanked her down to 168 point something uh, quite a bit different than what the USDA said in the August report. Uh, beans, on the other hand, they, they jacked it a couple tenths. You know, not a big deal, but it, uh, if that was to come true, we, we'd have a record bean production. Now, I think for most of us in this area, in South Central Iowa, we're kind of scratching our heads thinking, how can that be? Uh, most of us have, are still waiting for that August rain to, to fill our beans. And it doesn't appear that it's imminently going to come. Um, the next six, eight days look to be dry and on the warm side. So uh, the potential's still there in some fields, but we got to have some rain. Now, for those that got you know an inch or two here the last two, three weeks, probably a little better uh, deal on the beans. Uh, Corn-wise, I think uh, every year quality of land makes a big difference. It's going to make a huge difference this year, particularly in our area. The, the good ground still going to have respectable yields in most places. The poor ground, just about the entire area that we service, is going to have problems. Uh, we just didn't have enough water. And you can blame it on uh, nitrogen deficiency or potash deficiency. But if those nutrients are there and we don't get the water so the plant can absorb them up into the the bread maker, it doesn't matter. So that's kind of where we're at uh, until we get some actual yield data. I think we'll see some corn come out uh, east of us down in that Eddyville area next week. That's what people are talking. Uh, right here locally, I think it'll probably be the week of the 19th before we see a lot of movement. But as we keep having these warmer days, uh, this crop is maturing fast and changing fast. And with that, you know, stock quality could become an issue. So uh, it, it, it'll happen maybe quicker than we think. Um, as far as our facilities, we're getting ready. We'll, we'll definitely be ready here. Uh, we could be ready tomorrow if we had to be. We're that close and the other facilities aren't too far behind. We've got most of the grain moved out, uh, working to get the some repair work done, get the bin sprayed. Uh, the dryers have been checked out, things like that. So uh, we intend to be ready to go and, and we'll increase our hours of operation as needed. So stay in contact with your local people. New crop prices, uh, you know, corn still six plus, beans 13 plus. Uh, they're up this morning. We'll see if we can close on an up note for the week. We've had a couple of down days this week. Still respectable prices, historically high. Unfortunately, with the input cost, it takes that to make it work. So we can't get too bullish that this thing's going to continue to get better and let those prices slip away from us and we get back into the fives and twelves, which again are, are decent prices, but a little tougher to make money with the inputs. Um, you know, a month ago, it looked like fertilizer prices were relaxing some and maybe we was going to get some relief. Here in the last week or 10 days, uh, particularly nitrogen has shot back up and that's attributed to the price of natural gas. We're back up in that $10 range and so they're not going to let us have a, a buy, let's say, on nitrogen. So be kind of conscious conscious of that. Uh, talk to your suppliers. Hope, hopefully it's us and, 
and we can get you set up and taken care of. If you're a fall applier, I think it's important to, to get your needs taken care of. Um, crude oil has been trading lower. That's a good thing, bad thing. Good for when you stop to fill your car with gas. It's bad because it's uh, also tempering the demand for ethanol just a little bit. So uh, we gotta be careful what we wish for. Um, we traveled, uh, my wife and I, uh, 3,500 miles the last two weeks. And to be honest, gas was as cheap here locally as anywhere we was at. And we were primarily out west. Uh, didn't take long to get back above $4. And I think we paid as much as 440 in a couple of places out west. And, that, and that's where the oil is. So it's kind of odd that, you know, where the, the oil or the gas is being made is higher than the area like where we live, but it, it was that way. So we kind of got to watch that. Um, I guess the last thing I'll mention, uh, we're, we're, we're finishing up our harvest policies. I don't see any big changes other than drying charges. Uh, we're going to have to take a, a look at that first of the week. Uh, we was hoping that natural gas would come back down and maybe we could leave things alone, but I... It appears right now we're going to need to raise the drying charge just a little bit. I don't look for storage charges to change. So any questions on that, feel free to ask. But we'll get those posted on the on our website next week and get them set in motion. So with that, I'll turn it over to Scott and Mike, and they can take us through some feed items. Thanks, Mark. Well, with harvest and weaning and preg checks and finishing up hay, we're getting into a really busy time of the year for producers. With all that going on, don't forget to keep an eye on your cows out in the pasture. As dry as it is around the Milo area, most cows are needing a supplement right now. Even if they have grass, there's not enough protein in it to support a cow's needs. We have several options for tubs and feed that can fill their needs. Contact us and we can talk about your supplement needs. Um, there's still some silage to be chopped. I think most of it around Milo has probably been chopped by now. Don't take any chances with nitrates. Contact us and get your samples taken. It's a small price to pay for a lot of insurance. Um, silage needs to set at least 21 days before we take samples out of them. I know some of my producers over there are wanting to get into that as quick as they can, so I'm guessing on 21 days they'll be calling me. Um, this is also a good time to take some hay samples. With the prices for feed and forage this year, it's very important to know what you have. You don't need to be overfeeding, and some of this stuff might not be as good as we think it is, so we might need to add a little more supplement to it this year than what we're used to. So again, contact Mike or myself, and we can come out and get samples pulled for you. We can have rations build around the results to maximize your feed dollars. So with harvest just around the corner, I have an update on Milo grain. The new leg is up, and so are the loadout bins. The new pit and the drag in it are finished. The bin crew should be all finished in a couple weeks, they told me. We're just kind of waiting on electrician right now. They've been working on it. Um, everything looks really nice, and I'm really excited to start using it here in a couple weeks. That's all I got for you. Okay. Mark. All right, appreciate it, Scott. As Scott already said, with, with fall harvest just right around the corner, if you need forages tested, guys, call us. Let's get it done. And uh, I'll echo some of the comments that Scott made on why it's important. And um, we, will, we will be booking Kent Minerals in September and October. So in other words, what you might need for your September through November, or even if you want to lock it in what you might need through the end of the year but um, those uh, Kent mineral bookings start September 1st which we're into and the Hubbard we can talk to you about the Hubbard stuff because that's kind of an ongoing uh, program wean and calves some have been weaned some are going to be weaned don't forget about your stress tubs the brigade stress tubs it's really an investment uh, not an expense and we can talk to you about why that is and uh, stress feeds, everybody has different programs. So we do have a uh, stress meal product that if you can add into a TMR. It's a, it's a low inclusion product to help. Uh, so we have less calves that get sick and treat and pulls. 
if you want a pound a day stress supplement or we do have the complete feeds a lot of guys will take them off and creep and say I'll just feed them a complete feed uh, before because my forages and stuff aren't ready and uh, so you can ha get a complete stress feed and feed with hay and um, just kind of reviewing on this why tubs and stress feeds are important is that first 21 to 28 days there's been a lot of work done to show that if we put a stress tub out and get the calf over there and get that buffering action going she'll go ahead and go up and eat and uh, like she's supposed to eat but the big advantage of having a stress program which means stress feed and tubs is that all the work that's been done that the calves that were on a stress program versus the non-stress program uh, at the end of four weeks uh, there was about 40 pounds extra gain uh, on those calves and for the obvious reasons uh, because uh, they never got sick and their feed intakes were a lot more I know you get the combine and you're putting cows out on corn stalks and you say oh they got something to eat well but how are they going to break the corn stalks down? It takes protein to digest those corn stalks to feed those microbes in the rumen so we can utilize the corn stalks they got. So nothing wrong with corn stalks. Get them out there. But after the first seven days that the corn is out there, it's gone. And then all they got is, is the stalk. So that's why we need the protein tub to, to get that digested. So it's busy time is coming quick. So uh, communicate with us, and we'll try and get a hold of you and get you set up before you jump in that combine, okay? And again, thank you for your business. Mm -hmm.